Hey everyone, Alex here for Bright Dog Academy. If you'd like me to personally answer any questions you may have about your dog, be sure to head over to brightdog.com where you can learn about my online training program, plus pick up a copy of the official Bright Dog Academy ebook. Training your dog to stand. Now, stand isn't on the back two legs like a human. Stand is, is just getting them up onto um, all fours. So this would be from the time they're sitting, you could have them stand, or from down, and you could have them stand. And I like to stand basically as a nice command to, you know, get the dog to move. If the dog's laying down and I need to get by and, you know, my arms are full and he's in my way, it's very easy for me to say, Max, stand. He gets up and then he walks away. Generally, once they stand, they're going to walk and move, move out of your way. So, teaching your dog to stand, getting them up on all, all four legs. Let me show you how we do this. So, step one with stand, we do a couple of things. We get the dog to, used to hearing the word stand. We get them used to seeing the hand signal, which is this. We get them used to pairing the word and the hand signal with the action of getting up onto all four legs. All right? So the first part in and, and step one to get our dog to stand is using a lure. You're going to take some food and start off by having your dog sit or lay down. And you're going to take some food in your hand, just like this, and you're going to put it right in front of the dog's nose. And all you're going to do is pull it straight out. And when you pull it straight out, the dog is going to get up, and they're going to get into the position of stand. And that is when you say, stand. You don't say anything until the dog is in the position. Once they're in the position, and you've said stand, then that is when you give them a treat. Okay? So, in step one, it's an introduction, basically, for the dog, just getting them used to the command. We lure them. Treat right in front of the dog's nose while they're sitting or laying down. We pull it straight out. The dog gets up to get the treat. The second that they're in the position, you say stand, and then you give them the treat as the reward. So Max is already laying down here, so I'm just going to use him from this position. Treat right in front of his nose. Very slowly, remember we're luring, I pull it out. Stand. Good boy. Let's try again. Sit. We'll do it from a different position this time. Good job. Treat right in front of his nose. Very slowly. Stand. Good boy. Move your hand slow. It's all about luring at this, at this uh, step. Sit. Good boy. Treat in my hand. Right in front of his nose. Very slowly. I pull it straight out. Stand. Don't say anything until a dog is in the position. That's step one. Step two with teaching our dog to stand. Step two is basically going to be the opposite of what we did in step one. So the first thing you're going to do in step two now is say the word stand. Get your dog's attention and say stand. Dog, stand. And now what we're going to do is we're going to see if the dog responds to just the word. Odds are he won't, but Maybe he does. And if that's the case, he does respond, okay, what we do is right away, we give him a treat. Very, very, very easy. If he does do it, great. That's, that's hopefully what we want. If not, and I'll tell you won't, all right, but if he does, we give him a treat. Now, let's say we get our dog's attention, we say dog, stand, he doesn't do it. That's okay. We don't repeat the word. We don't say it again. All we do is we lure him. We get that treat, we put it right in front of his nose, and we just pull it straight out. Once he gets up, then you go ahead and you let him have it. Right? We don't repeat the word, we just lure him. We make, it, it make the command an easier version. So we say stand. If he responds, perfect, give him a treat because he did it. Other side, we say stand. If he doesn't respond, that's okay, that's most likely what's going to happen. We take a treat, we put it right in front of his nose, and we just pull out. Once he's standing, good job, we give him the treat. I say the word, stand. If he does it right away, good, treat. If not, we just lure. Don't repeat the word, we only say it once. Max, sit. Good boy. So now I'm going to say the word, Max, stand. If he does it, good boy. So he gets the treat right away. Good, that's what, we're, that's what the goal should be. Well, let's try from a different position. Max, down. Good job. Max, stand. Yes. Good job. Good job. Let's try one more time. Sit. Good job. And 
that stand. He doesn't do it, so I just lure him. Good boy. All right. That's step two for stand. So step three with down is very similar to step two. You're going to get your dog's attention and say the word. If he responds, he stands, perfect, give him the treat. All right. On the other side, we're going to, let's see what happens if he doesn't do it. We say stand, he, does he respond? No. So what we're going to do now is we're going to give him just the hand signal. But we're not going to have any food. No food, because what we're doing here is we're starting to wean away the food lure. We want the dog to respond to just the word, just the hand signal, okay? So we say stand, he doesn't do it, so we just give him the hand signal. And once, if he, if he does it, perfect. You give him the treat, all right? So this is how step three looks. Step three is almost identical to step two. The only difference is if he doesn't respond now, we're not using a food lure, we're simply using a hand signal to, without the food to get him to do it. Once he does stand, we treat him and treat him with the opposite hand. Don't treat the dog with the hand you used as the hand signal. We want him to see that there's no food there anymore. And that food just comes as a reward for listening to the command. Step three, we now are starting to wean away the food lure if the dog doesn't respond. So we have him sit, lay down, say stand. If he stands, excellent, we give him the treat right away. If he doesn't stand, we just give him the hand signal. No food now in our hand. Once he stands, we treat him with the opposite hand. Okay? Uh, Max, let's go. Come on. Let's go. Good boy. Sit. Good. Nothing in my hand here. Max, stand. He doesn't quite do it. Hand signal. Good boy. I treat him with the opposite hand. Good job. Let's spin around here. Okay, so I have nothing in my hand here. I want him to see that. Max, sit. Good boy, nothing in my hand. Max, stand. Good, good. Treat with the opposite hand. He did it with just the word, right? So that's step three. Okay, so step four. You now know what steps one, two, and three look like. So step four is where we start teaching the dog to generalize. That no matter where we say stand, it means you gotta stand, okay? So you've probably been practicing a lot of the time just at home, which is fine. That's where we want to start off, somewhere where there's low distractions. But what we're going to do now is add, you know, now that we've been through these three steps and our dog is getting it, we want to start practicing in different environments, getting our dog used to generalizing. So instead of staying in the house, we're going to go somewhere a little bit more difficult, just out to the front yard, or you could go in your backyard, some place where there's some more sounds and smells and things to distract your dog. And you're going to try to get your dog to stand the way you did in step three. You say the dog's name, dog, stand. And if he stands out in this new high level of distraction, excellent, give him a treat. If you're out in the front yard, you are at step three, you say dog stand, and he doesn't stand, well what do we do in step three in that case? We give him the hand signal. But he doesn't do it, he doesn't stand, even though he was doing it before. That's okay, odds are that's what's gonna happen. So we don't get mad, all we do is we go back and practice step two in this new level of distraction. So we're in the front yard, dog, stand. He doesn't stand. We try the hand signal, he doesn't stand. What do we do? Now we lure him. Remember, that's what you do in step two when he doesn't respond. Treat in, the front, in our hand, right in front of the dog's nose, and we pull out. The dog stands, you give him the treat. We're out in the front yard and he still doesn't do that. That's okay, so we have to practice an e even easier version than when we practiced in step one, where you have to start by teaching it to him all over again. All right? the, the higher level of distractions you go, you will, odds are you're going to have to practice an easier version of the command. So we're in the front yard, we had to go all the way back down to step one, and after two weeks or so, we're back up to step three in this level of distraction, the dog is able to uh, stand with just the word. So what do we do then? Now we add a higher level of distraction. Now we go to a park where there's lots of people, people riding bikes and you know playing baseball, all sorts of stuff going on. And we're at the park and we say dog stand. And he doesn't do it. So what do we do when he doesn't do it? In step three, we give him the hand signal. Hey, and he doesn't do it. That's fine. We go back and down to step two. What do we do in step two when he doesn't do it? We lure him, 
And hey, he did it. Great. So now that at the park, we don't have to go down to step one. We just have to work around on step two for a bit and then eventually get back up to step three. And once we can do stand the way we do it in step three at the park, you go to an even higher level of distraction. Now we go to the dog park. And these are just examples of distractions. You can you know, go to different places and, and make your own levels. Um, bear in mind, dog, having other dogs around is the highest level of distraction there is, which is why I like to use the dog park at the end. But you could fill other things in, in here. Go to the beach, um, you know, go to pet stores, go to malls, things like that. But step four is about practice. Step four is the most important step because now that you know how to handle the dog in the different times that he doesn't respond to the command, you can go practice this anywhere. Anywhere you go to practice this, you know what to do if he doesn't listen in this step. If, if it's still too hard, you know to go down to this step. If it's still too hard, you know how to teach it to him all over from the basics. Okay. So step four, it's all about teaching the dog to generalize. That stand means stand no matter where you are.